Hi everyone, this is Tucker from Tucker Sewing and Quilting. And in today's video, I'm going to be walking you through my process of how I quilted Becca's Monica quilt. So without any further ado, let's just jump right into the video. Okay, as you can see on the screen right now, I actually stabilized this quilt at Becca's house. So what I did is just stitch in the ditch where the red blocks meet the tan blocks. And that secured all of the quilt top down so that I could quilt it however I pleased when I got home. When I brought the quilt home, I decided on what thread colors to use. And these are the two thread colors that Becca gave me, this red and then the tan. This tan is what I used to quilt the tan sections and this red was what I used to quilt the red section. But uh, if I would have decided to do an edge to edge, the when the edge to edge would have went over the red sections, the tan would have shown up way too much on the red sections, as you can see right there, way too much. And if I would have chosen red thread, the red would have showed up way too much on the tan, but would have completely disappeared in the red. And Becca told me that she wanted each block to have its own color. So the white or the tan have tan thread and the red have red thread. But if I would have chosen an edge to edge, it would have been a choice between these two. It would have been which one you wanted to show up more. When I got back home, I loaded this quilt on the machine and I started to stitch the feathers into the blocks. And I'm going to insert a clip of the machine quilting out those feathers right here. Now that all the feathers have been quilted in this quilt, in the tan sections, I was looking at the quilt and I saw all this empty space in these red blocks over here. And Becca told me that she didn't want any quilting in the red, but to me, it just looked a little bit off. So what I did was I used my draw line feature on my Statler and just put a simple X through each block just to hold down the fabric and to hold that batting in place. This isn't a showstopper X, but it's just something there that's gonna hold everything together and just add a little bit more detail. So I have some clips of me stitching that out. So let's roll those clips. As you can see, I have stitched all of the background blocks and I have done all of the stabilizing. Now, Becca gave me a little bit of direction and told me that the original Monica quilt did not have any stitching in the red areas and if possible to leave that open. 
But obviously, the original Monica quilt didn't have anything in the tan section either. And to me, how my brain works, I feel that the red section would look as though it was completely forgotten about when the whole quilt is completely finished. So, my thought process is we still want the red blocks to have less quilting in them so all i'm going to do is put a diagonal line through each block that will ensure that the batting is held in place over many washes and it will ensure that there's some visual interest adding to the quilt within those red blocks so what i'm going to do is i'm going to use my statler's draw line feature and i'm going to pull place lines in between, diagonal lines in all of these red blocks. So let me show you how I did that. Okay, I'm coming over to my Statler and I'm going to use the draw line feature. So I've selected that and I'm going to come over to my machine. I've selected the draw line feature on my machine and I'm going to move to the top left corner of the quill and I'm going to start placing my points. So let's imagine that this seam right here is the top of the quilt. If I was to click a point at the very top corner of where that red block and the batting starts, when Becca goes to put her binding on, that quilting line will be in a quarter of an inch because once she puts her quarter inch binding, that stitching line is coming up to the point that she covered up. So we want to think ahead of how the binding is going to put, be put on. So we want to come in a quarter of an inch. So I'm not going to click a point exactly where the block ends. I'm going to come down a quarter of an inch, which is that's how much my foot is. That's on my machine. And I'm going to click a point, then go up and then continue. So I'm coming up I'm not clicking the point. I'm coming down a quarter of an inch and clicking. Go up that rest of the quarter of an inch and click. Come over and then come down that quarter of an inch. Coming down that quarter of an inch will give you the same result. She's still putting on her bi binding the whole way around the quilt. So you want all of your outside points to come in a quarter of an inch to allow for that binding. So I'm back to clicking points. Clicking a point. And here is where I have to do a little bit of eyeballing in the middle. So right there, right there's the middle. Click a point, click a point, point. And this is an outside block. So I come in a quarter of an inch and then out, out and then in. So by me coming down and finding the center again, that's going to, or coming back, I should say, is going to give us those other two points or other two triangles. But this is definitely something you can do without a ruler foot, without a long arm even. You can do this on your domestic machine and just, Make sure you're, you know, using your walking foot and your diagonal lines and make sure you're coming in a quarter of an inch when you reach the edge. One more thing before I get started is on my machine, I have a feature called stitch in points. And this will be helpful when we come to the center of these blocks. So once it gets down here at the point that I made, it will take one extra stitch to ensure that that point is very, very sharp once the quilting has moved out of that area. When we roll the quilt, that will be very helpful. So I have better registration marks or better clickable points. And I'm gonna keep stitching points on. So every time it, the two points meet, it'll take an extra stitch and it'll look like one continuous line. So normally stitching points is up at the top, but if you, if it's not up at the top of your toolbar, all you have to do is hover over stitch and click it and come down here and turn on stitch in points. And it says stitch in points off, but if you go back on, 
if you click stitch again, stitching points will be on. So uh, we're ready to get started. If you have a Statler with any draw line, it will automatically set your speed a little lower, which in that case is okay because that gives you time to manipulate the fabric if, if things shift a little bit. I'm gonna try that just a little bit. All right, I'm slowing it down again. Right here, it's gonna come up to one of those stitching points. It takes that extra stitch, and as you can see, that point right there is very, very short, and that will help me when it comes time to do the next rose registration. completes the first row of the stitching in the red blocks. And now I'm gonna do a pan over this whole first row. So to me, let's go over to a full one. Right here you can see this quilting right here and how it makes an X through these red blocks. But to me, I see a secondary pattern coming out and I see this framing the white block. So to me, it adds more visual interest into the whole entire aspect of the quilt. It really makes your eye bounce around and move. So I'm just going to pan across and then I'm going to roll the quilt and show you how I'm lining up the next row. Okay, I have rolled the quilt and I'm going to shift the first row up on the computer screen so you can see how they're going to line up. So what I'm going to do is click the first point. I'm going to click that and then I'm going to come over here to the second point and click that. And that has shifted the pattern up. So now what I'm going to do is select draw line again. Okay, I'm going to select draw line. And you can see right here, this is the first pattern that we stitched, the pattern in red. So keep that in mind. So I want to line this up and I'm just adjusting my straps here. So I'm going to start on the block that has a point, the outer left block. That should have a point. If not, I'm pretty sure you can manage to match the points up as you go. But this is how I'm doing it on this quilt. So I'm gonna start and click a point at the very edge and I'm gonna come in my quarter of an inch, allowing for binding. So now I'm going to come up and meet with that point. And I have a laser light showing me where, where my needle will stitch and I'm hovering right over where my machine took that extra stitch. So I'm gonna click that point, and then I'm going to come down to where the reds and the tans meet, and click in the middle, come down, click a point, and here we're gonna do the same thing we did in the previous row. We're going to find the center of this block. So I'm gonna find the center, and change direction and click a point, click a point.
Let's talk about why I went with the design, the feather design that I went with. I could have done a free motion background fill in each one of these tan blocks, but how my mind works is when I look at this quilt, it is very traditional, very repeating. It's a repeating pattern. It's a checkerboard pattern. So you want that consistency. So I wanted to put something the exact same in every block, the same in the red, the same in the tan. And I just, that's what I did. I put the feather in there in every single one and it keeps that consistency going. So that helps bring more interest into the quilt because quilting equals consistency. All right, everyone, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Uh, this was a very simple quilt, so not very much to talk about because there was only two patterns or two designs that we needed to talk about in this video. So I hope you enjoyed watching my thought process and hearing about how I quilted this quilt and made the decisions that I made. Um, thank you so much to Becca for allowing me to quilt her beautiful Monica quilt. This is actually my first video in a new series that I'm calling Why This, Not That. And I'm just going to be, you know, walking you through my thought process as I'm quilting different quilts, you know, more in detail. Why this, not that? Why not put this feather here? Why put this line here? You know, stuff like that to give you ideas of how to quilt certain shapes and certain patterns and blocks. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. Please uh, go give Becca, so Becca, some love. Uh, I'm very appreciative that she let me quilt her beautiful Monica quilt. And cheers to so many more quilts and a wonderful time together. Thank you everyone so much for watching. Be sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and give this video a big thumbs up. See you next time.